In this video, we will be finishing um, the rest that is not mentioned in the previous video. This is, again, um, a video on all of the topics that were taught in grade 12 fourth quarter physics. Um, all of the topics are um, according to DepEd's curriculum, that is the Department of Education in the Philippines. Um, and yes, uh, of course, this trend is STEM. Um, okay, so in the previous vid, just to um, reiterate or recall what was discussed, we did tackle Ohm's Law, uh, V is equal to IR, series and parallel circuits. We discussed about thermal expansion. Um, we solved questions um, on this topic as well as in calorimetry. Um, so this time, we will be working on frequency period waves, mirror equations, as well as the index of refraction and Snell's law problem. Although I don't think we did um, in our school, I don't think we, in our class, um, I don't think we did tackle much about it. Especially in, if I recall correctly, the, ra the, the very last worksheet. I believe it was no longer part of the exam and so I didn't review for it anymore. Um, so yes. Let's just skip this part. What is this? I think this is where we are supposed to start. This was mentioned in the previous vid. Okay, so compression and refraction. I think uh, basically this is where um, in a sound wave, um, usually when uh, particles compress, that's, uh, you refer that um, to compression. If uh, the, these particles are loose, like when they're far away from each other, I think that's what you call rarefaction. Uh, okay. So let's talk about the two types of uh, waves. We have mechanical wave and electromagnetic wave. Now, what's the difference between the two? For mechanical waves, uh, we're able to, based on our um, human senses, we can touch them, we can hold them, we can feel them, we can hear them. So, mechanical waves in particular, they need particles to travel, and they are invisible. So, out of all of the senses that um, we can use to detect mechanical waves, we cannot see them. So, uh, mechanical waves do not um, appear in our sights. They're not visible um, in the real world, or at least in the human eye. For electromagnetic waves, on the contrary, uh, we can see them. They are visible. They do not need particles in order to travel. Um, and yes, they are visible light. So visible light uh, will just, yeah, um, what describes them, one of them is basically that they are visible. So in a perfect vacuum, there are no particles. So perfect vacuum is, is an example of an electromagnetic wave. So what's an example of an electromag wave? We have visible light, the red GBIV, red, orange, yellow, uh, Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. How about examples for mechanical waves? We have uh, sound waves, ocean waves, waving of hands, seismic waves, and springs. Okay, let's go to the parts of a wave. So, the uppermost portion, this part, uh, you call that the crest. And the lowest part of a wavelength, sorry, of a wave is called the trough. And the height from the center line to the crest or to the trough is called the amplitude. And the distance for crest, uh, from crest to crest or from trough to trough is called a wavelength. It is uh, written in the symbol lambda. 
or yeah, Greek letter lambda. Okay, um, so going back to compression and rarefaction, um, like what I said earlier, in compression, this is a region in a longitudinal wave where particles are closest together. So from the word compress, they are closest together. For um, rarefaction, this is defined as the region in a longitudinal wave where particles are furthest apart. Okay. So what is the difference between a longitudinal and a transverse wave? For longitudinal waves, uh, they travel from left to right. Um, so medium to move parallel to direction of wave. Okay, so left, right. How about transverse waves? They move um, up down. So the medium to move perpendicular uh, to the direction of the wave. Okay, so from here, we could say that uh, in terms of the direction of a wave, um, it is it goes from left to right. And it makes sense because uh, if a wave travels from left to right, it's parallel to the direction of the wave. Therefore, uh, the direction of a wave is also from left to right, and probably vice versa as well. Unlike transverse wave, it is perpendicular to the direction of a wave. So if a transverse wave moves up and down, then the direction of a wave goes left and right. So it makes sense that uh, the relationship is perpendicular. Okay. So in frequency period calculation, um, we do have this formula. So frequency is equal to the number of waves. Um, if there is no specific uh, number stated, then we just put one. And then the t uh, corresponds to the idea that it's called the period of time. So another formula is uh, v is equal to lambda times f. I suppose that is um, the velocity, is it? Let me just make sure. Let me just verify it. Mm, okay. So it's basically velocity or speed in the context of waves. So, yeah. In this question, we are given uh, 72 cycles in 90 seconds. So definitely we have the time and the number of cycles. Now we have to look for frequency. So we use this formula. So frequency is equal to 1 over t. Um, such that instead of placing 1, we are actually given uh, a value um, for waves. That is 72 cycles. And the period of time will be 90 seconds. That is our denominator. So the answer is 0 0.8 over seconds or hertz. Just to let you know, um, this was actually written on purpose. There's such thing as over seconds as a unit. Or in other words, you can um, call that hertz. Hertz is per second and vice versa. How about uh, looking for the period, period of time? So let's assume that, um, well, if you manipulate this formula, so we have this instead, um, the number of waves is still in the numerator part. So assuming that we do not use uh, the 72 cycles. We're instead given um, 1 for the number of waves. Um, if we're not stated um, any value for number of waves, we again write 1. So 1 over the frequency, which is said to be 0 0.8 hertz, about hertz or per second doesn't really matter, but it's preferred to put over seconds because what we're looking for, the unit for t, or period of time, is in seconds. So if we um, simplify this, it's basically like this. 
1 over 1 times, uh, well, initially divided by 0 0.8. But because we reciprocate in order to eliminate the division sign, hang on. Am I doing it right? But yes, uh, the answer is already there anyways. It's 1.25 seconds. Um, this is just um, just in case you're not allowed to use a calculator in the exam. Okay, 1 over 1 times... Well, supposedly 1 over 0 0.8. I guess the second will be there. Yeah, it makes sense because another way of writing this is 0 0.8 over seconds. If you reciprocate, this is what you get. I think. And then that's the answer. One over 0 0.8. So that's going to be 8 instead, and this is going to be, sorry, 10. You move the decimal place to the right one time. 5 over 4, 1.25. And of course, don't forget the unit. So it's the same thing as what was already stated. So yes, that's the answer. Um, let's move this time to... Uh, the reading of wave registry. So, what is lambda again? Um, so, this is the wavelength, the distance of a wave from crest to crest, like what I said earlier, from trough to trough, also. And yeah, from normal to normal. That is, um, I believe, for example, um, this is your first normal, and you end up in the other side, that is this. Basically, um, well, am I actually doing it right? So from crest to crest, it's like that. Um, it's like one, two, sorry. So this part is covered as well as this, as well as this from crest to crest. So overall you make, uh, if you combine the shaded regions, you somehow make a circle. So in the context of from normal to normal, I think this is um, one wavelength from normal to normal. Because if you shade this and this region, it makes a circle. Okay, now it's all clear. Okay, wavelength, velocity of waves. I didn't write more on that anymore. Next page. Okay, um, so let's uh, talk about the electromagnetic spectrum. Again, the velocity of a wave is equivalent to lambda times the frequency. Lambda, that is the wavelength. Well, why are they multiplied to each other? From this formula, it is implied that um, the length of a wave uh, has an indirect or inverse relationship with the frequency of a wave. So, for example, if lambda, if um, the length of a wave is longer, then the frequency of a wave is shorter. If the length of a wave is shorter, then the frequency of a wave is higher. So, these are standard. When interpreting the electromagnetic spectrum, these two details are very important. So as you can see here, um, the region at the right side, it's classified to have um, the shortest wavelength and they also have, to have, at the same time, the highest frequencies. So in this region in particular, um, they have the highest uh, 
amount or level of radiation. Um, in the context of uh, exposure to humans, it's not safe, especially gamma wave. Um, in X-ray, uh, this kind of um, wave is used in the medical field um, in order to see through um, the human body in order to detect any complications or physical abnormalities in the skeletal system. However, um, it is worth noting that because it is, um, as you can see here, the frequency is already high in this region and X-ray is here, it's actually not safe to be uh, unnecessarily or um, exposed for too long um, in X-ray waves. It's not safe and it may cause cancer. Um, just like exposure to radioactive elements such as uranium, um, similar to what has happened in the Fukushima disaster as well as in Chernobyl. Um, exposure to radioactivity, radioactive substances, it has a direct relationship with cancer, tendencies for cancer, chances for cancer. Anyways, um, so the most radioactive, again, is gamma wave. Next is X-ray. And then we have ultraviolet light. This is from the sun. That's the reason why, um, particularly in places like Australia, um, or generally in places where uh, the ozone layer is, in a way, full of holes because of uh, global warming. Well, just recently, I believe uh, the ozone layer problem has been um, under control. But back in the day, during the times when uh, the ozone layer wasn't doing very well, um, ultraviolet rays coming from the sun has been an issue because it has caused more people to have skin cancer. So yeah, just to give you a, st a brief story on ultraviolet light. Um, next is Rajibiv. This is visible light. Uh, it's in the center. It has, um, well, it has a shorter wavelength compared to radio, micro, and infrared, uh, but their wavelengths are, uh, their wavelengths are longer compared to X-ray and gamma wave and ultraviolet. But again, it's in the center, so it's self-explanatory. Um, next, we have infrared. Uh, this is used in thermal scanners and TV remotes. Um, yeah, if, um, like me, you've been interested in seeing how, uh, devices heat over time, testing their capacity in handling extreme heat, um, testing iPhones, uh, their capacity to, um, load certain applications, and later on checking their temperatures, well, this is where infrared is useful. They're used for uh, scanning um, materials that can produce heat. Comparing how a device overheats um, for doing this particular um, performance for computing, etc. Uh, microwave, this is used in ovens and Wi-Fi's. Uh, for radio wave, this is the least um, the least harmful. Although, uh, everything here aren't necessarily harmful as as necessarily harmful as the ones in the right side. Well, just for good measure, radio wave, just to be fair, radio wave is located in the leftmost side of the spectrum. And it has the longest wavelength at the same time having the lowest frequency. So this is the least harmless as in the least, least. So this is used in radios and televisions. Okay. We're done with the spectrum. Let's head over to wave frequency period and the speed of light. So, uh, again, velocity is equal to lambda times f. Uh, frequency is equal to the number of cycles over a period of time. Speed of light is in meters per second for its unit. Um, the wavelength is in meters. 
the frequency is in hertz or in per seconds or second for period it is in seconds so um well i already have the answers here but you know what sorry let me just check this for a while 20 and 3 okay um basically what i answered above is there are solutions for these questions over here so i believe it's best we re-answer everything um okay a vibrating source with a frequency of 20 hertz uh, produces water waves that have a wavelength of 3 centimeters. So the speed of waves, that's uh, the missing value. So this is pretty easy, actually. Basic physics. Um, so the velocity, again, is equal to the lambda times the frequency. Velocity is equal to 3 centimeters times 20 hertz or per seconds so 3 times 20 that's 60 60 uh, centimeters per seconds we need to convert this in meters well the answer is already here but i don't know why it wasn't stated that we have to con that we have to convert uh, our value in meters but to be fair um like what was stated earlier Freak, uh, wavelength, the wavelength, the unit is supposed to be in meters by default. So what we should have done in the first place was convert 3 centimeters to meters. Um, either way, if you convert this to meters, that's fine either. But I believe this is easier. It's easier to convert what was already given in a different unit to a desired unit already. So, um, so we have meters, decimeters, centimeters. Centimeter to meter, one, two. Three cm. Well, this is one, two. Zero point zero three. And then we put, remove the C, that's gonna be meters. Zero point zero three meters. Okay. Zero point zero three times twenty. That is uh, 3 over 5 or 0 0.6 meters per second. Okay, so that's the final answer. Next question. What is the period of a wave that travels through a spring at 2.5 meters per second and has a wavelength of 1.3 meters? Okay. Well, just to re reiterate the formula for period, well, we have P F is equal to one over T. Wait, sorry, that's that's different. Wait, wait a minute. Ah, okay. Period of time that's in T. We're in the right tracks. So manipulate this formula such that t is missing so we have this um, but we don't have the frequency in order to find what we're looking for we can find the frequency using these two uh, in this formula okay so frequency is equal to the velocity, 2.5 meters per second, over lambda, 1.3 meters. We can rewrite that as 2.5 meters per second times 1 over 1.3 meters. Cancel the meter unit. And then we have instead over seconds, uh, or basically in hertz. Let's just stick with this unit. Um, 2.5 
divided by 1.3 is 1.92. Okay, now that we have found frequency, we will use the t is equal to 1 over f formula. One divided by one point nine two is zero point five two seconds. Sorry, I almost forgot the over seconds there. So if you reciprocate this unit, it's gonna be seconds. Okay. So that's the answer. So far so good. A wave travels at 10 meters per second. If the wavelength is 10 meters, what are the frequency and the period of the waves? Okay, rewrite the formulas again. Lambda times F and then F is equal to 1 over T. T is equal to 1 over F. You have to look for frequency first because we have the values that can surely help us find it. We cannot find uh, the period of time yet because we do not have the frequency which is needed in order to complete the formula to find it. So um, manipulate this formula, f is equal to velocity over lambda, just like in the previous question. f is equal to the velocity, 10 meters per second, divided by 1 over meters so the frequency is 1 over seconds period of time is equal to 1 over 1 hertz or If we move Hertz at the top, it's going to be 1 over Hertz, or in other words, just seconds. Okay. It takes a water wave 5.2 seconds to travel between two docks that are 19 meters apart. Okay. Um, so in 17 seconds, that corresponds to 20 crests. Well, how much is one crest in terms of meters? That's what we have to know. Seventeen divided by five point two. I think we can use ratio and proportion here. Three point twenty seven. Twenty twenty divided by three point twenty seven is six. This is uh, somehow equal to six point eleven crests. Um I don't remember my solution here, but I'll see if I can improvise. I am not going to look yet on the answer key that I've already written. I'll see if I can answer this. Find the wavelength of the water waves. Well, if we just have one.
this is direct proportion. So 17 over 5.2 is equal to, sorry, 17 over x. We're looking for 20 crests in terms of meters. Um, equal to 5.2 over 19. 17 times 19, 323, 5.2 times x, uh, 62.12 meters. Well, how about just one crest? How much would that be? So 20 over 62.12 is equal to 1 over x. x is what's missing again. Well, let just to not confuse it with the previous x value, which we just found, let's put this in y instead. 20y is equal to 62.12. y is equal to 3.10576923.1 It's kind of close to uh, 3.07615 But I don't know why we didn't get the exact value Well, at least that is my own solution uh, What I used, what I did was use uh, ratio and proportion I'm not even sure if uh, this solution is accepted in the first place, but at least that's my solution. Let's check out um, the actual solution, the one intended um, by the teacher. Okay, where are you, number 4? 